Throughout history, we have seen that when people come together with a common purpose and a shared vision, incredible things can happen. From the building of great civilizations to the overcoming of seemingly insurmountable obstacles, unity has proven time and time again to be one of the most powerful forces in the world. And yet, in our individualistic society, it can be all too easy to forget the importance of working together and supporting one another. Today, we will explore the biblical principles of unity and discover how harnessing its power can not only transform our lives, but also impact the world around us. In Psalm 133, the psalmist writes, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. This beautiful imagery reminds us that when we come together in unity, we experience the blessings of God and the sweetness of fellowship with one another. In the New Testament, we see a similar emphasis on unity in the early church. In Acts 2 verses 44 to 47, we read, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This passage describes a community of believers who were fully committed to one another and to the cause of Christ. As a result, they experienced tremendous growth and impact in their world. Another key passage on unity is found in Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 6. Here, the Apostle Paul urges the church to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Paul reminds us that our unity as believers is grounded in our shared faith in Jesus Christ and our common calling to be his followers. This unity is not something we create on our own, but rather a gift of the Holy Spirit that we must work to preserve and protect. We also see the ultimate example of unity in the life and ministry of Jesus himself. In John 17 verses 20 to 23, Jesus prays for his disciples and for all who will believe in him through their message. He prays, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus understood that unity among his followers would not only bring them closer to God and to one another, but would also serve as a powerful witness to the world of God's love and grace. People often talk about how we should be united, and they agree. But when it comes to actually doing the work that's needed to make unity happen, they forget what they said. In the Bible, Jesus prayed a final prayer before he died. In John 17 verse 20, we read his words and get a sense of what he wants for us today. In this chapter, Jesus is saying that he prays for those who believe in him and that we should all be one. He also says that God has given us glory, and we should be united just like Jesus and God are united. We should show the world that Jesus was sent by God and he loves us as much as God loves him. On the last night before Jesus was arrested, he prayed to God for one thing, that we would all be unified. Today, ask yourself if you are answering Jesus' prayer or if it still remains unanswered. Are you part of the body of Christ and have a unified heart and mind? We should ask God to give us the ability to listen and act on his words so that anything that divides us as a group, or makes us disagree, or separates one generation from another can be destroyed. We are asking him to give us the power, grace, and passion of Christ that will make us united. Jesus was arrested and beaten on the night before he died for us on the cross. It's worrying that his prayer still has not been answered today even with so many different Christian denominations existing. Jesus gave his life so that when he returns and takes us to heaven, 
those who believe in him will be united. He won't separate us into different groups based on how we worshipped here on earth. Everyone who gets to heaven will go through the same gate, and even if you didn't get along with certain people on earth, you'll have to spend time with them in heaven. When Jesus prayed, he did not ask for wealth and riches. Instead, he asked that we be blessed in other ways. The Bible says that Jesus gave up his riches so we could be blessed in different ways. Jesus paid for our prosperity with his death on the cross. But when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wasn't asking God for us to be prosperous. He didn't ask God to give us supernatural power or miracles. Does this mean Jesus doesn't want us to have power? No. He told his disciples that they would receive power. The Holy Spirit gives us power and authority. Jesus said that when we make a decision on earth, it is the same as if we made it in heaven. This means that God gave us a lot of power. Moses and Isaiah both said that God does not lie, so we can trust what he said to be true. Jesus also told us his word is truth. The Bible tells us that Jesus blessed bread and fed 5,000 people with it. He walked on water and spoke to the storm so the wind and waves stopped. This powerful God that cannot lie told us that people who follow him can do even greater things than these. God wants us to have more power than what we often experience. Jesus prayed and asked God not for prosperity or power, but for us to be united as one. If we are willing to give up our own will and do God's will, then we will have the power and strength needed to make a difference in the world. Are you willing to answer this prayer by sacrificing yourself for unity? Unity involves sacrificing your own wants and needs. It can be hard to do this. Most of us want the other person to make the sacrifice, not ourselves. We need to practice self-sacrifice if we want our relationships like marriage to work. This means both of you have to give up something for each other in order to be unified. The New Testament says that wives should honor their husbands and husbands should love their wives. Both sides have to be willing to make sacrifices. Jesus was the example of this and he sacrificed himself for the church. In Titus chapter 1, the Bible says that leaders in the church must be willing to sacrifice their own will and do what God wants them to do instead. 2 Peter 2 verse 10 tells us about false teachers. It says they are stubborn and focus on their own desires rather than God's will. This is why the church is divided today we put our preferences ahead of our purpose. We should not let our preferences determine if we like or don't like going to church. You didn't like what you heard and saw when you went to the church because sometimes, we put our own preferences first, instead of focusing on why we're there. The reason we go to church is to praise God, listen to His words, and worship Him. It's not about what we want, it's about spending time with God. Psalms 133 tells us that it is good when people come together in unity. The Lord commands a blessing, which means when people are united, God will bless them. If someone says he wants to talk about God's guaranteed blessings, people would be excited. But if you say that those blessings only come after sacrificing our own will for unity, people may not understand. If you follow God's truths, you will get the key to understanding God's plan. Unity brings God's blessings and authority into every aspect of your life. However, we often prevent God from blessing us because we don't want to give up our own will to accomplish His will. Paul said it takes hard work to stay unified. He said I die daily. What he meant was that he had to give up his own will every day if he wanted unity. Think of how much time is wasted in families, businesses, workplaces, schools, and ministries because people don't want to stay together. This causes fights and arguments that take a lot of energy and hours to fix. Many businesses don't have God's blessings because they don't work together. People go to work without God's blessings because they are not doing their job selflessly. We should do our best at work, not just for the company, but for God too. According to the Bible, there are three things that God hates which come from a lack of unity. The first thing he hates is pride, and it stops us from uniting with each other. Secondly God hates it when people lie or spread false stories about others. God also hates it when people do bad things or hurt others, since that separates us from each other instead of connecting us. Finally, God does not like it at all when someone causes trouble between brothers and sisters in faith. Keep this in mind whenever you talk to other Christians, 
and don't talk about them in a bad way. The devil wants us to be apart. He loves it when we fight and disagree with each other. He doesn't care if we go to church on Sunday, but he does want us to keep fighting the same fights afterwards. He also doesn't want us to have enough faith in God's promises so that we can believe they are ours. The devil wants us to doubt what the Bible says because if we do, then our minds will be divided and confused. When you can't make up your mind, you won't get anything. Listen to what people say, but if we all work together and decide to do things God's way, the enemy cannot do anything about it. We have power from God's word and his blood. We have the ability to take down any idea that goes against what God says. That is what it means to pull down high things that go against God's knowledge. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 that our weapons are not physical, but they are very powerful. They can tear down anything that stands against God's knowledge. We think of supernatural battles as things happening in heaven, but most of the battles we fight are actually between our ears. We know what is right and wrong, but we don't always do the right thing because we don't win the battle in our minds, this is what the devil wants. The Bible says that someone who is not sure what they want is unstable. When the preacher wants you to visit your minds, so you can be open to hearing God's word, the devil tells you that the preacher just wants your money. You should keep your money in your pocket because God didn't tell you to give it away. The Holy Spirit is asking you to give, but you are hesitating because the devil makes you think that you can do more with the money yourself than what God could do. When it comes to blessings and prosperity, you put your own needs first and blocks out any possibility of receiving from God. The same devil that tells us not to give, be patient, or be kind is the same that whispers lie into our minds. He tells us that no one understands us and no one cares. But we know this isn't true because Jesus loves us and has given us his word, his blood, and his truth to help us face anything the devil throws on our way. So, let's use them together to defeat whatever stands in the way of God's knowledge. God's word says he will give us perfect peace if we focus on him. We should take that peace and tear down anything that keeps us away from it. The Bible also says the joy of the Lord is our strength, so let's make sure our lives are filled with joy that is too great to express, and brings wealth and glory. Lastly, when God says he has never abandoned those who do what is right, we should trust that we will succeed. God can free us from any situation. Use that power to take down anything standing against God. When we come together in unity, we can enjoy blessings, breakthroughs, peace and joy. But to do this, you must be willing to sacrifice yourself for the good of all. Jesus prayed for us and asked God that we be together as one. We pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will make us one today. Help us to work together instead of competing against each other. He will take down anything that stands against the knowledge of God and fill us with his spirit, power, and might. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you, and God bless you.